Hello everybody and welcome back to Down to Earth with Jim. I've not done a video in quite a while because we've been quite busy with the arrival of our baby boy, Arlo. So I'm doing a little bit of a season roundup now that we are in September. Fortunately, it's the end of the season and we live in the UK, so we're quite restricted to what we can grow. Um, we can only grow things in the warm months, spring, summer, and then we can only grow a few things really in the greenhouse and the polytill over winter. But there are, there are a few things that we can grow over winter. And um, it feels like we've only just started growing things, like everything's only just really started going. So, yeah, this season's gone really quick. It's been a busy year. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk through the things that we've grown this year. And I'm going to go through what's gone well and what hasn't gone so well. So, a bit of a season roundup today. I hope you enjoy the video. So I'm just going to start off at the front of the plot over here. We've got the sweet peas which have been flowering now since about early to mid-June. Um, they're still actually flowering, there's a few flowers on them but I've sort of let them go to be honest because I've been so busy. Um, I was picking off the flowers and the pods as much as I can but yeah they've just gone. They've started to die back and they actually fell over. Um, I had to prop the frame back up again. The weight was just so much. Um, they all just come crashing down so they're the sweet peas there's more over here these are these are going a bit better actually these are these are still flowering now um they'll probably be flowering till the end of the month and then over here our dahlias which to be honest they've only just started getting going really they had a problem with slugs and every time i um put the dahlia plant in they just shredded them down to nothing but they've gotten going, there's some nice colours in here. A few nice um, varieties of orange ones here. They're quite nice. Unfortunately though, there'll only be a few weeks left and then they'll be gone. So there's a few more dahlias down uh, this bed. But same, similar problem with the other dahlias. They've always uh, had slugs attacking them. More dahlias. These cornflowers here have been quite nice this year. These have been flowering for quite a while. They're getting attacked by a black fly now though, so I need to saw that out. These blue asters have been lovely. Our wildflower patch, which has gone a little bit wild. And then along the front of here we've got our snapdragons, which actually have passed their best now. There are still a few flowers on them, but these have been nice. Then we've got our bed of swedes over here. Now, every time I grow swedes, I always have problems with slugs and you always nibble holes in the side of them but to be honest they've not been so bad this year the slugs on the swedes and we've picked one of these swedes last week and they're actually really nice uh, nice decent size and it's not riddled with holes like it usually is so our swedes seem to have been a success this year we've got two beds of sprouts which of course don't have sprouts yet because the, you know the uh, cold weather prop and we'll be getting them in around November December time but we've got this bed here of Brussels sprouts which we've been gifted and then we've got this bed of Brussels sprouts which I've grown from seed these are much more um, much, much bigger these ones and there are a few little sprouts on these so we'll be getting these ones first and then I think we'll be getting the second lot over there a little bit later. So moving over to our uh, squash and pumpkin bed. We've got some butternut squash here, which, you know, third time growing butternut squash this year and still haven't had that much success with it. I don't know what it is, but I put these in here in about May. I think it was around middle of May, late May, and still we've got a few butternut squashes on them, but they never really get going up, up the supports. And we don't really get squash till at least September, October. And even then, we only really get um, a couple of, um, sort of small to medium sized squashes. So I don't know, maybe there's not enough sunlight because of these trees, which we're supposed to be getting chopped down actually, so that'd be uh, good. 
Um, we've got some spaghetti squashes here, which not too bad actually. There's a couple of them here. These seem to be doing a bit better than the butternut squash. Then coming around to the other side, we've got some pumpkins. Um, got a few different varieties. I will put them on the screen. I can't remember exactly the, the names, but one's an eating variety, and then there's a there's a green one over here, which is balancing right on top of the support up here. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that one because I don't want that flying off there and it'll just bring the vine down with it and we don't want that but yeah we've got a few pumpkins on here um not too bad companion planted these with borage as well which has been really nice it's been really nice for the bees and we've built ourselves a couple of little diy ponds just using a washing up bowl and some old containers this is pond number one and then this is our second pond over here technically two containers but We'll say it's just one pond, this one. And we've got a couple of nice plants in there as well, some oxygenators. So I saw a lot of frogs hopping around my plot. So I thought I'd provide something like a little wildlife pond. And hopefully that will help keep the slug levels down. So I want to encourage more frog activity on my plot. And hopefully that uh, tempers the slug problem a little bit. The strawberry cage and the little strawberry bed next to it has done amazing this year. Pardon all the nasturtiums that uh, I didn't plant these, they just self seeded from a couple of years ago and they have completely taken over. But I do let them grow a little bit because I think um, they do attract black fly. They're a good trap plant and help keep black fly off your other plants. So they're one to keep. Probably not. Let them get as crazy as this though, that's a little bit too much. We'll uh, definitely keep on top of that next year. But our strawberry cage has done brilliant this year. And we have been picking strawberries from mid-May till mid-July this year. We started off in the pot along hanging baskets. And then these ones in here will go until mid-July and they're brilliant. So strawberries have done great, as always. We've got a few winter cabbages over here. Um, some red ones called Maribel. I do need to re weed this bed though, these are getting a little bit out of control. Asparagus bed has done absolutely nothing the third year now. Maybe we might get some next year, I don't know. To be honest, I might just pull the entire thing up, um, make a raised bed this high, and just plant some fresh asparagus crowns. Now, I did start these from seed in 2020, so I know it's a long wait, it's an, um, got to be in it for the long haul. So, yes, I don't know. They seem to have done not as well as last year. So, I don't know. Maybe they rotted during last winter. Over to the sweet corn right next to it. Um, they've not grown as tall as last year. Maybe it's because they're a different variety of these, actually. And we've covered them over with socks to help keep the birds and the rats off. And it seems to have done the trick. None of them seem to be in attacked. We have picked a couple of sweet corns last week and they were all quite nice. So sweet corn's been quite good this year. Not the best. Last year was better, but um yes, because I found a couple of cobs hadn't been pollinated on the end properly and the uh, um only half of them had been pollinated. So I think that's partly down to the fact that when these tassels were up and the pollen was falling off them i didn't wasn't really coming down to the plot um to come and shake them to get the pollen off um i think it was actually when we were uh, having our baby so yep sometimes you can't always um sometimes life gets in the way and you can't always get things done so it's just one of those things Got another little brassica bed next to it with some cabbages at the back there We've picked a couple of these already. These are these have been nice, nice, decent size. Uh, they make really good cold floor as well, actually. Then, um, I think they're called Brunswick. Them ones at the back, and then we've got some more broccoli here. I need to pick that. That's a really nice size broccoli. I'm going to pick that for tea tonight. Now this year we decided we were going to try growing some out outdoor San Marzano tomatoes. 
Now, I was kind of asking for it here because we always have a problem with blight on our site. Now, it seemed to have took, it took a hold around the end of July, early August, and then it just slowed down and it's not really progressed any further. Now, we've had a load of green Samazanos and I've had to take them off and start ripening them at home. Um, some of them have started ripening actually, but there's a few more green ones which you need to get off. Um, so, I wouldn't say these have been a success because I've not actually picked any vine ripened ones off. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to do this next year. I think I'm just going to stick to greenhouse growing tomatoes because the, the blight just gets some spider whip there. Um, yeah, the blight just demolishes and there's a ripe on there which got taken over by the blight. Um, but plenty of green ones, so I think ripening these at home in a drawer with a banana or an apple is going to be the way to go I think with these. It's been the second year for this apple tree and this plum tree and we picked about three or four plums off this, nothing spectacular but it is its second year so I didn't expect much from it and this apple tree here we picked about 15 to 20 reasonably sized apples so I'm quite happy with this and I expect we'd probably get twice as much apples next year. So I'm looking forward to them because they were really tasty. And the sweet pea support has gone over again. I'm going to uh, sort this out. In this bed we've got just horse manure, nothing else. Just literally composted horse manure. Now I grew a giant pumpkin in this bed last year and I didn't really know what to do with it. So this year I decided I was going to do something else. I'm doing some Tromoncino uh, squashes, did the long types. I started these off in about, I think it was June, I sowed these. So I started them off quite late, sort of a last minute decision. But we've got a few little squashes growing on them. So maybe we will get something off this. I suspect these will be growing into October. They'll still keep going. So they'll be uh, interesting to see how they do. On the other side we have a jungle of nasturtiums that's going crazy. Um, I kind of let this side get out of hand actually. Uh, I did, I stuck a couple of blight resistant outdoor tomatoes in here just as an experiment to see how they performed in the horse manure and I kind of forgotten about them to be honest but we have had quite a few tomatoes off these two plants um, they have gone bushy, they've gone crazy, I've not trained them, as I said I just forgot about them, but we have had some tomatoes, so clearly you can grow tomatoes in pure horse manure without a problem, so whoever says you can't grow tomatoes or any fruit in plants in horse manure, it's a myth, uh, clearly you can do it. There's a nice bunch of green tomatoes on these horse manure grown tomatoes here. A few more there, a few more nice little tomatoes here. Got some uh, later sowings of spinach in this bed. Probably start picking some of these baby leaves soon. Our herb bed in the middle has been giving us an unlimited supply of chives and garlic ones here, but normal chives here, and they've just self seeded themselves everywhere. I had to cut the oregano back because that was just being greedy for space and just taking over everything. These courgettes in the middle have not done great. They've got some powdered mildew and uh, I think they've got some sort of uh, nutrient deficiency as well or mosaic virus probably. Um, yeah we've had a few courgettes off them but to be honest I don't think I've placed them in the right place being behind this. Um, support full of runner beans when the sun is right over there. It's over there now, but usually it's over there. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to put them somewhere different last, this year, next year. Now, the thing is, last year with our courgettes, we had enough courgettes to sink a battleship. And I'm not joking when I tell you that. We were giving them away to everybody, our neighbours, our friends, and we still had loads of courgettes. We were actually freezing them at one point. So I did far less courgettes this year and 
it's just one extreme to the other. We've not had anywhere near as many courgettes as we'd like this year, but yes, it, that is what it is. But these runner beans, which I've grown in between two beds here just to make the most out of the space, they have done quite well. We've uh, been picking quite a few runner beans off these. They're still going. Um, I expect them to be going until November. They usually do. Um, they, they go off for quite a long time. Um, yes, they're, they're quite nice. Uh, the bed right next to it was the bed which um, had all the main crop potatoes in that got absolutely demolished by the wireworms, which I made a video about. Um, yeah, it's been an absolute disaster, this bed. My other beds of potatoes haven't done too badly. Just for some reason, this one seems to have gotten it worse. Um, we couldn't salvage a single potato out of this one bed. But over here was our shade-grown main crop potatoes, which I also made a video about, which did really well, actually. Potatoes aren't really that fussy. And then along the back here, we've got a... A load of buckets left. It's still got a f some sarpo mares and some kestrel potatoes left in them, which we'll probably pull out at some point when we need them. A nice raised bed full of parsnips here, which are starting to get to a decent size. Actually, I had to take the netting off them. Um, I did have carrots and parsnips in here, but the parsnips just took over, so I let them do their thing. Took the netting off. And um, we should have some nice parsnips by Christmas, I think. They're, they're, doing, they're doing okay, these. We've got some more carrots and parsnips in this bed here, which are uh, coming along really nicely, actually. It's uh, gotten quite big. Got some really big varieties of cabbages in this bed. A couple of broccolis there, but these cabbages are going to get really big, I think, because of the size of that one already. It's not even formed a proper head yet. Um, these are called Brunswick. So these are a big variety of cabbage. Got a bed of leeks here, which we've been harvesting for some time now. A lot of them have bolted because of the extreme weather we've been having this year. We've had a couple of quite um, record-breaking heat waves this year, which have taken their toll on a lot of things, but these leeks especially, and um, they've really bolted. So that's a shame. But we do have another bed of leeks over here which have not bolted yet and will be growing over the winter so that'll be good, these will be giving us leaks throughout the winter and we've got another bed here with some younger leaks um, so another lot of leaks which we'll be picking probably late winter, early spring um, I've mulched these with grass clippings by the way if you're wondering what that is we had some quite nice lettuces in this bed before I planted these leeks around May, June time and uh, we are picking these for our sandwiches and they were quite nice. These raspberry bushes here which are next to the rhubarb, they've been quite nice. We've, had, we've got two different varieties here, we've got some um, spring, summer varieties and then we've got some late varieties as well which are coming in now. And the rhubarb next to them, which is starting to die back now, looks like something that's been nibbling on that i don't know what's what's been having a go on that that's uh strange but the rhubarb's been lovely they've got some nice beetroots in here which are ready to pick now i think i'm going to get on with picking them in a bit some nice ones some of them have bolted yeah we've got various varieties of winter cabbage and kale and purple spray and broccoli here to go out soon when they get a little bit bigger probably towards the end of this month in, or in October. The tomatoes in this greenhouse, which are all F1 varieties, have just started dying back now. But well, these have, we've been picking these now for a good two months or so. I think the reason they are uh, starting to die back now is partly due to the fact that I've not watered them all that well being in these containers. Uh, but nevertheless, they have pretty much finished now. We've got a couple of grapevines in the small greenhouse which have bared fruit this year, quite a lot of it actually. They are not a seedless variety so I've been spitting pips out of these but they're quite nice, they're quite tasty, look good as well. Um, there's another grapevine next to it, next to this one, um, which hasn't done anything actually, it's just, yeah I don't know, I think it might be the quality of the soil. 
because this one has got homemade compost in and this one has got like a cheap shop bought compost so i blame the compost for that and then next to this we've got a fig plant tree fig tree which has done nothing there are things on it but they just keep going soft and falling off so i don't know i don't know what i should do about that if anyone has any recommendations on growing figs please let me know mm -hmm. on the other side of the small greenhouse we've got a load of heritage tomatoes i had a load of spare ones so i just threw them in here and they've gone absolutely crazy in horse manure again so um yeah another uh experiment which has done quite well i think we've had a load of these brad's atomic grape and uh some nice ones uh artisan blush tiger again and some black beauties as well we've had quite a few of these as well so just goes to show that you can still grow tomatoes in horse manure we have some carrots which i've had to put a couple of slug pellets down because the slugs just kept ripping these seedlings apart these little carrot seedlings um every time they came up the slugs came in and just wiped them out so these are our winter carrots. They're just, uh, they've been planted in the soil left over from the potatoes. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm reusing the compost for that. Barry's crazy cherry tomato is still going strong. There's a load of tomatoes left to pick on these. Actually, there's a few yellow ones on there. I'm definitely growing this one again this year. This one's been brilliant. And then for the rest of the polytunnel, down here we've got just a jungle of heritage tomatoes. I need to cut these back a little bit. But we've got loads of different varieties which we've been picking from for a good couple of months now. Oh yes, um, I'm quite surprised that the blight hasn't been as prolific as it usually is. That plant's fallen over over there, I need to pick that up. Um, it's, yeah, it's not been as bad as it normally is and um, it did start taking hold on one side of the greenhouse, uh, polytunnel, sorry. And then it just sort of slowed down and didn't really spread any further. So I think we've been spared the worst of the blight this year. Um, so yeah, we've been quite lucky, really. A few weeks ago, I did a tomato tasting video of all these different heritage tomatoes, um, 18 varieties. If you want to go check that out, you will find it in my videos. In this bed next to it, we have peppers, which didn't really do much actually until around July, August time. They were staying really small um, and they were growing about one centimeter a week of that. And, and then suddenly they just took off and started producing flowers and fruit. And there's a few fairly decent sized peppers on them actually. There's a nice couple of peppers there. Just waiting for them to ripen, really. Um, so yeah, they, they took a while, but they eventually did get going. Um, so yeah, we'll probably be picking peppers later this month. We got them in August last year, so just a little bit later. And then over here we've got uh, a couple of melons. We've got some watermelon and we've got some cantaloupe. Um, the watermelon's just gone up here, across here. Um, but there's no watermelons on it actually, not on this one. There is um, a cantaloupe melon here though. So yeah, there's a, there's a couple of smaller ones. So we might get a couple of melons. It's actually my first time growing melons, so I can't say I'm an expert at all, far from it. Um, and then we've got a, just one aubergine plant here with one single aubergine and of course we've got these mini munch cucumbers here which have uh, started to slow down now i think they've got a little bit of mosaic virus so um, earlier this year we also harvested quite a nice crop of onions which have grown from seed as well now we've still got quite a few left in the shed which we're uh, storing and um, our garlic did quite well as this year as well actually and i'm going to be planting some of them soon i think towards the end of september early october so what went well what didn't go well well, there's quite a few things that did go well this year. Um, 
but I think I started growing planting a bit too much more than I could really more than I could really handle so obviously the slugs became a problem overcrowding became a bit of a problem and I think things were competing for light and space and nutrients um, I also didn't come down to the plot quite as much as I should have done so not everything got watered as sufficiently as it should have done like for, the, for example the tomatoes in the greenhouse in containers suffered a little bit with blossom and rot because I just didn't water quite as much as I should have done. Um, some of the tomatoes in the greenhouse got a bit heat stressed because I didn't always come down to the allotment to uh, open the greenhouse or polyton when I could have done. Um, and that would have probably stopped the heat stress and the blossoms falling off the tomatoes. Um, I also, I think with my dahlias, I'm going to grow them on in larger plant pots in the greenhouse first, protected from the slugs before I plant them out. Because this year, I put my dahlias outside when they were only small. Now, to see, with dahlias, slugs like them when the leaves are smaller. And as the dahlias get a bit bigger, they don't really tend to bother with them as much. So I think if I let them get much bigger, then I shouldn't have a problem with the slugs and I'll probably have daily flowers much earlier. Another thing that I'm going to be doing next year is planting all my uh, seed potatoes in buckets instead of growing them in the ground because I thought I could get away with growing them in the ground this year as well as in the buckets. But clearly the wire worm had other plans and decided to go in and have a party in our potatoes and really uh, yeah, made it an absolute disaster um, and an epic fail. So. I'm going to be growing all my potatoes in buckets this next year. Um, this year, my potatoes in buckets did absolutely brilliant, had no damage on them whatsoever, and they were quite a decent size as well. I can't really complain with the size of them. And it's a really good thing to experiment with different varieties and new things, but I think I've got to a point now where I know exactly what I want to grow and what works well on my plot. It's been three seasons now, so I think I've got a pretty good idea of what I should, what I can grow and what I can't grow. So I think next year, especially now that um, with family life and stuff like that and with more, more stuff going on in my life, I think it's a good idea for me to just focus on the things that we, we know that we eat and the things that I know grow well on my plot. So stuff like brassicas, tomatoes, courgettes, beans, onions, potatoes, stuff like that that we, you know, all these staple crops that we, we know we're going to eat rather than um, experimenting with all these different varieties of like, gosh, I was um, experimenting with different types of kale, different types of salad leaves, and um, what else, uh, kohlrabi, and all sorts of different things. I think I just had too much going on. Um, so I was focusing on all these different things, um, which also, you know, it caused me to kind of neglect other things as well. Um, so, yeah. I'd say the crop that has done the best um, out of anything this year, it has to be tomatoes. I've tried a load of different heritage varieties this year, and I have to say I've been very, very happy with uh, the results this year. And I'm definitely going to be growing the same varieties again. So that was my little 2022 season roundup. It's been a very busy year, and I've not had that much time to come down to the plot as I usually would have done. So it's got a little bit out of hand, and I've got quite a lot of uh, tidying up to do for the winter. But um, my priority at the moment is getting the last bit of harvest and getting them picked and then getting everywhere cleared and packed away ready for winter getting them a few um winter vegetables planted out so i'm, I'm gonna have a few things that are growing over winter i did a blog, blog article on that if you want to check it out in the description i listed 10 vegetables that you can grow in the winter months um, so that's really good there are actually quite a few that you can get away with still growing in the winter so thank you for watching my video if you enjoyed watching then please hit that subscribe button also click that um, like button as well so that youtube knows that you're liking my content and it knows to recommend it to other users as well who also like gardening um, if you've got any feedback then please let me know in the comments and i will see you in the next video take care and happy gardening